So our, our last presenter is Dr. Igor Kozak, and Igor is going to discuss a unique application of the Navalaz, which is to very precisely do your panoramic photocoagulation guided by your angiography and really do, I guess, selective PRP. So I'm going to be talking about a new concept with uh, uh, navigated retinal photocoagulation and uh, um, and it's going to be targeted uh, retinal photocoagulation using uh, retinal navigation. And, uh, um, so what are the principles uh, and rationale for uh, TRP? So, so we are talking about TRP, not PRP. Uh, we are basically uh, using selective treatment and we are uh, targeting the ischemic retinas or areas of pathology and uh, uh, this really uh, was catapulted by uh, the advent of wide-angle fluorescein angiogram uh, and, uh, and the technology which allowed us to see areas of peripheral non-perfusion. So uh, uh, by this targeted uh, retinal photocoagulation, we are avoiding some of the shortcomings of, of classical PRP, such as visual field loss and uh, uh, macular edema due to uh, very extensive PRP for for these eyes. Um, so uh, uh, there is very little pub published literature on this TRP approach, and uh, basically uh, Stephen Schwartz published on two cases uh, uh, in which they identified using wide-angle uh, fluorescein angiograph angiograms uh, eyes with the peripheral non-perfusion. They treated that and. Uh, uh, took care of pathology, and then with the uh, pattern uh, technology, pattern uh, laser photocoagulation, a group uh, in England uh, uh, applied this, uh, this approach to uh, selectively treat only the areas of, of ischemia and uh, not do a full PRP, and they reported uh, uh, resolution of uh, proliferative diabetic uh, retinopathy with uh, fewer side effects. Uh, uh, the last report uh, that really talks about this uh, selective uh, TRP targeted uh, photocoagulation comes from Rick Spade. He used uh, a group of eyes from different clinical trials, and, and again, he lasered only areas of peripheral non-perfusion and looked into uh, uh, central retinal thickness and uh, the macular edema. However, this did not, uh, in, in his cohort, it did not lead uh, to uh, uh, decrease in uh, uh, macular edema, treating uh, the peripheral uh, non-perfusion. So uh, what is the principle of navigated TRP? Because the, the, the few reports that I mentioned used uh, standard conventional laser uh, to ablate uh, uh, this peripheral non-perfusion. But using navigated, we basically can uh, image guide our treatments and uh, we perform wide angle fluorescein angiograms or, or fundus photos and we can delineate the, the pathologic areas and we can create a treatment plan uh, selectively uh, uh, targeting these areas which uh, is very difficult, close to, to impossible to to do it very precisely using uh, standard uh, conventional laser. And then, once we create this treatment plan, we, we continue as, you, as is usual in uh, navigated photocoagulation and, and we perform treatment with uh, uh, overlay of, of uh, live retina image. So let me show you a few examples and if we could dim the light, that would really be helpful because these are, are very uh, um, important. So this is an eye which had received uh, lots of uh, PRP before. Um, uh, this is uh, Opto's wide-angle image, and uh, uh, in spite of that, it still shows some, uh, some leakage. Uh, 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 the other eye of the same patient, again, uh, very heavy panretinal photocoagulation. In spite of that, uh, there is some active neovascularization. And uh, again, this is a wide-angle image, and, and this is what we are seeing. So we clearly see some areas of non-perfusion and, and some neovascularization there. So what we basically did, we targeted... Uh, can we dim the light? Uh, Marcus, can you hit the... I don't know if it will help, but that, that would... Okay, not really. Uh, okay, so we basically target all these areas uh, of, of uh, non-perfusion and, uh, and deliver laser only there. Uh, mind you that this is an eye that had received very heavy PRP and, uh, 
And uh, we need to be very careful of how much more we want to photocoagulate because we also want to preserve some, some of uh, uh, the, the retinal uh, tissue that is there. And this is just an image post-treatment. Uh, post uh, the other eye, again, uh, we have a treatment plan on the left which uh, targets the area of non-perfusion and that uh, area of neovascularization superiorly. And this is what it looks like after a photocoagulation. So really precisely targeting just that area would be almost impossible with regular laser because we would have to look uh, almost after every photocoagulation application to, to fluorescein angiogram and, and go back and forth. Okay, and, and in spite of that, I don't think it would be possible to delineate you know, the margin of, of those areas of non-perfusion. So with this technology, we can do it in an automatic fashion. We can uh, precisely target the areas where we want to treat. We can safely stay away from viral structures, such as the fovea, and, and uh, we can target the ischemic areas and or adjacent intermediate areas to that if we wish. But uh, we, we don't necessarily ablate the remaining healthy tissue. Um, and this is another example. Uh, we have a wide angle photo and wide angle uh, angiography showing uh, uh, some macular edema and uh, neovascularization nasal to the optic disc. And uh, this is a blow up image on the left. We see fluorescein angiogram with created uh, uh, a treatment plan. And those areas that, that contain this yellow spot, which are the areas where we will treat, uh, precisely target the, uh, the areas of non-perfusion. So all that is non-perfused, plus uh, we also target the, the area of neovascularization. Okay, so, so we want to, we delineate all the areas that we, we intend to treat, and then uh, we perform treatment. On the left, we see what it looks like on wide angle, and this is a blow-up post-laser uh, post, uh, uh, image. So again, it's very precise treatment only to the areas of pathology. So that's true targeted uh, retinal photocoagulation. And here it shows, so everything that, that is planned actually lands on the retina where we want it. Okay, so, so that's the idea of, of uh, very targeted, very, very selective uh, treatment. And, and this is the best technology that you can do it with because Again, uh, creating the treatment plan with, with a standard conventional laser, it would take you much more to do that. And, and again, there would be some false positive laser applications and false negative. That means we would um, apply some of the lasers to the areas of so-called healthy retina, and we would probably leave some of this non-perfused retina uh, untreated. Um, and the same patient actually had uh, macular edema to which we did not do anything. We only treated the areas of, of non-perfusion and this was uh, on the upper left images is, is pre-treatment uh, uh, OCT. Then this is four months, so there was a significant reduction of uh, uh, macular edema and then uh, the final uh, image is after a vestin injection, which was at month six, so I was getting nervous because there was still this residual uh, retinal cyst, uh, so we treated it and it completely resolved. But maybe if we would have waited, you know, even that cyst would collapse. But anyways, there, there was significant reduction in macular edema uh, just by treating the areas of non-perfusion. Um, so, uh, we can plan this, uh, this targeted uh, uh, retinal photocoagulation. We can use uh, images from wider uh, angle imaging systems, import. Uh, we can play with these images and, uh, and crop them and uh, create uh, treatment plans, which then we can uh, incorporate into photocoagulator and perform the treatment. So, uh, so again, I think this is a wonderful technology for this very selective uh, targeted retinal photocoagulation. So, so this is basically a new approach, new technique called navigated TRP. And uh, we need to uh, assess its clinical efficacy, how, how clinically useful that is, 
but this is one of the approach to, to do this selective treatment. And I think that's all. So, Igor, do you like to treat diabetics with focal uh, selected PRP before they get the vascularization of the disc? Uh, well, we talked about it, and uh, and actually we have a, a trial going on to to do that, and we are so looking you, into macular. Are you seeing an effect on macular well, edema? I do see an effect, maybe not as as profound as we would get with uh, intravitreal injections, but there definitely is. Mm -hmm. So maybe another step would be to include an arm with combination with uh, targeted uh, uh, laser and and uh, injections. But of course, with the targeted laser, you've got probably no visual adverse effects because you're lasering dead retina. Correct. When you do a regular PRP, yes. you're lasering good retina as well. Right. Yes. Right. So, so there are opportunities to try new things, and I think that this navigated TRP is is, a, is an elegant method, and uh, we need to look into how how effective it is in real practice. Thank you.